rattle through these questions for so nobody's left out one question. What is the difference in evolution and adaptation? Um, well, you, evolution is summarised as descent with modification. Biologists, okay, that's what evolution is. Adaptation is applied to the fit of an organism within an ecosystem. Uh, the assumption is that if an organism is adapted, you know, some sort of pattern has been modified to make it appropriate, then that's an evolved thing. You could equally talk about adaptation as uh, a designed function which God has created for that. So I think they're two different concepts, but some people would link them. Uh, could you comment on the different variants of theistic evolution? From one extreme that God just set it going to God directed it step by step. Well, evolution doesn't need God. Right? It's a theory that's gained credence precisely because it doesn't need miraculous explanation. It is a naturalistic theory <laughs> for the origin. It doesn't need God. So uh, theistic e evolutionists uh, are up against it because the evolutionists say to them, why are you accepting evolution? It doesn't need God. You know, It doesn't need God to direct it step by step. So some of them are less um, accepted uh, than others. I think these are Catholic um, Church of England type theistic evolution is that God created the initial conditions and then uh, it just all happened. But I read more than I want to know about uh, these, these people and what they say. Um, the questioner says, those who put forward God directed theistic evolution seem more dangerous as their arguments could sound more plausible. And they can sound plausible and they can be very uh, alarming for people. But just bear this in mind, that Christa Delphine didn't invent theistic evolution, all right? Um, the Catholics invented theistic evolution a long time ago because they accepted evolution, then they had to readjust, all right? And they were the first to do it, I think, you know, with, well, you know, uh, orthodoxy adapted itself. It was an evolutionary process of adaptation <laughs> to, uh, to... But their issue isn't our issue. Their issue is where to put the immortal soul. All right? That's their issue. They don't mind what sort of death Adam had, naturally speaking. It's his immortal soul they're worried about. So they, in a sense, they don't care about some of the things that we care about. Because at some point in evolution, God introduced immortal souls into the picture. And it's what happens to them they're interested in. Though they don't say so much, that so much in these, the evangelical literature. But that's behind the scenes, right? So the death they're talking about is you know, what happens to that. So I think that we have to be very careful in going to these sources and saying we can learn from them. Um, how should those considering a university choose their subjects? Uh, very carefully. <laughs> I mean, you might say, don't do biology. Um, I'm, I'm not going to say that. I think if you can go in with your eyes open, uh, that's one thing. I, I don't think it's a great subject to do, uh, given the way the secularism and the rhetoric and the political correctness now has imposed a straitjacket on people able to ask questions. I mean, there was a time when teachers could teach biology and say, um, you know, evolutionists say, or the multiple choice answers could be answered honestly, you know, uh, according to the theory of evolution, how old is the earth, you know, and you could have answered it because you learned what evolutionists say. But now you might be asked, how old is the earth? And if you thought it was young, you'd get a wrong answer. So the question isn't how old is the earth according to the theory of evolution. That's taken as gospel. And so the world has changed, and it will, there will be conscience issues much more in, I think the Military Services Committee has been looking at conscience issues in the workplace much more in that regard. So I think if you go to university, you should be what an item of what job you're going to do. Um, I think uh, science uh, subjects are better than non-science subjects. Because the nonsense that you have to learn for the non-science subjects is at least as dangerous. And uh, if you're doing English literature, I don't know how you cope. Uh, you know, 
uh, and if you do psychology, what nonsense you're absorbing. So, <laughs> show my bias. Accountancy. <laughs> what? Accountancy. Accountancy, right. fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> economics, Mark, economics. All, all do economics, okay? <laughs> Chemistry, physics, maths, I think you're going to be free of much evolutionary stuff there. Medical science is not bad. Uh, engineering, excellent. You know? <laughs> so, and you can use this. Um, and then James 1.17 says, no variableness. How do we understand the characteristic of God um, in which there is no variableness, yet there must have been occurrences of discontinuities? So I, I, I think James 1 verse 17 isn't talking about no variableness in what God does. I think it's no variableness in his character. So I don't, I don't, I think it's mixing up two different ideas. That's all the questions I have.